New England Patriots are up next. If I could find them. They're, uh, Spelled it wrong. Yeah. They're right below them. Yeah. It's not, it shouldn't be that hard to find. Well, I was searching. and Well, obviously, Drake May is their uh their Oh, I headline. know. I mean, I know, I know who they got. New England Patriots. I was looking for their uh, – where's their composite grade here? Are they in a similar spot, too? No, they're 12th. No, they're 12th. Composite grade's 12th. PFF, B+. Plus. Of course, it all started with Drake May at pick three. Uh, in the second round, Jalen Polk, the wide receiver out of Washington. Third round, Caden Wallace, the tackle out of Penn State. Um, it was an offensive – centric draft only one defensive player so they did double up at receiver Javon Baker from UCF they got him in the fourth round the one defensive players cornerback Marcellus Dial from South Carolina and they doubled up at quarterback at pick 193 in round six they bring in Joe Milton from Tennessee and then tight end Jaheim Bell don't sleep on him he can he can do some damage in the right yeah maybe they doubled up a tight end oh oh I see what you're suggesting there. Yeah. Uh, I saw somebody joke that they brought Joe Milton in just to make Drake May look accurate by, by <laughs> proxy. I like that. You think Jake, Drake May's inaccurate? Wait till. <laughs> no, Milton with an absolute cannon for an arm. I mean, look, I would. Maybe they brought him in just. You remember when Jacoby Brissett is the designated uh, Hail Mary guy? Yeah. Maybe that's Milton then. Yeah, Hail from Mary the, from anywhere in the field. From the 30. Yeah. You could throw a Hail Mary. All right, let's discuss. Drake May uh, at three. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Drake May. So, a lot of the sort of top quarterback discussion, it's like, do you like the quarterback that they took in isolation? I think you, everyone here thinks that Drake May was the second quarterback in this draft. So, getting him at three overall makes sense. It's good business. But the decision was not really Drake May versus other quarterbacks at that spot. It was Drake May versus trading down and what you could <coughs> potentially pick up. Now, we don't know exactly what was on the table, but – there were reports that there was an offer out out there from Minnesota that had all of the first round picks, you know, 11, 23 and a future first. And the Patriots still weren't taking it. Yeah. If that was the offer, I think I'd have taken it. But anyway, the point being, if you don't, now you've got your back against the wall, trying to put an offense around Drake may with, you know, seven more draft picks, which isn't easy to do. So Jalen Polk is a good receiver. Um, really good receiver, actually. Like the guy that flashed on tape when you're watching Penix or, or Roma Dunze tape, he's a really good player. Um, and they obviously need a wide receiver help. I don't know if he's, you know, the, the problem the Patriots have had is just a real lack of difference makers at wide receiver. Like they, they seem to have had quite a lot of guys that are fine, but all of them together still equals just okay slash not great you need a difference maker from somewhere. Now, maybe they can find a trade for Brandon Ayuk. Like, maybe that's on the table now that the draft is finished. And if you added Brandon Ayuk to this receiving core, now you're cooking. But absent that guy, it, it just feels like a lot of players that are quite similar. Kendrick Bourne, Jalen Polk, Juju Smith-Schuster, Demario Douglas, Javon Baker, um, KJ Osborne. It's like a lot of guys that are just complementary pieces, but they, they're not complementing anything at the moment. So... Look, I think Polk's a good player. I like Javon Baker as well. I think the two players they added at receiver are good. Uh, they did come back and hit offensive line a couple of times, the third and the fourth round, Caden Wallace and Layden Robinson. Um, they both felt kind of reachy in terms of draft picks. And again, I'm not sure either one of those is solving what is quite a weak offensive line on paper. So I think what this is is a decision to take the quarterback rather than rebuild the infrastructure and – a sort of immediate reflection of what that, like the consequences that that brings. Yeah, so I think to, to sum it up, they felt like they had to take the quarterback. Now, if we went back and we said, here's the trade that was on the table and let's use a little, little hindsight, here's what we know. If they had been able to trade back to 11, that was the pick that the Vikings used to just trade up one spot to secure J.J. McCarthy. Right. So theoretically, the Patriots may have left something on the table that could have netted them, J.J. McCarthy, whatever they would have gotten at pick 23, and a first rounder next year for the Minnesota Vikings or trade it down with the Giants, say taking J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix, QB4, and then next year had the Giants yeah, first I mean, rounder so as well. If they had taken that trade down, options that would have been on the table for them, right? They would have been within striking distance of a small trade like Minnesota did to, to go after maybe Roma Dunze at nine, um, maybe Olu Fashnu that who went actually ended up going 11, but the Jets would have taken him a pick earlier if you hadn't traded. 
Uh, so Fashnu, uh, Talise Fuanga, one of the best defensive players. Maybe. They would have taken. A, they would have still taken a QB though. The Patriots, if yeah. they traded down. No, I'm saying use don't take. That's the whole point of trading down is don't get the quarterback. Go build the infrastructure. So all of the players that would have been Always, available, yeah. you could have gotten one of the big three wide receivers. You could have gotten Fashnu, Fuanga. Uh, Amarius Mims, you know, one of the, the top tackles up there. Any of the best defensive players on the board would have still been available at that spot. 23 would have put you, uh, literally, it's the pick that Brian Thomas Jr. went in. Um, again, there's a bunch of offensive linemen there. Graham Barton went after that. Uh, the, the second wave of guys or any of the second wave of wide receivers. So, and, and then obviously you have a first rounder next year to then put yourself in position to go get the quarterback if you somehow win more games than you're expected to this year. So, that is what you're dealing with. Like that's the take, decision. We're just laying out Drake May was. and Jalen Polk and some reaches at offensive line and Javon Baker, or one of the best receivers or tackles in the draft, another high end receiver or tackle, and the capacity to go and get a quarterback next year in the first round, who you probably don't rate as high as Drake May. But like that was the decision they made, the calculus, and they ended up going Drake May, um, and you see the results. So I'm good with the Drake May pick, by the way. We're just I wanted to lay out both sides of what I think New England was weighing with those decisions. Um, text from Mike, Patriots fan Mike, you know, one of our listeners here. You know, it's basically like I feel good, but you know, doesn't feel great coming out of it. And I right. think that's I think that's fair because you're never going to solve everything if you're the New England Patriots. And I also didn't necessarily love some of the the offensive line players that they that they chose. I'll talk about that in a second, but. Um, Jalen Polk was wide receiver 10 off the board, right? You were never going to get a guy we like, Drake May now has his number one weapon. You're just not in position to do that. Nine other receivers already came off the board. So your point, Polk is a complimentary piece you know, on a team of complimentary pieces. Not to, you know, beat a de uh, dead horse here. But yeah, this is the, basically the same supporting cast that uh, Mac Jones really struggled with. So it's going to take some time, I think, here. Um, for all the people that are calling for Drake May to sit, it's like, I oh, throw Jacoby Brissett out there with this team. We'll see what they end up doing. But um, the first step, I think, as far as the rebuild goes with the Patriots, the two offensive linemen that they took, uh, Caden Wallace out of Penn State, Layden Robinson out of Texas A&M, just as from a model perspective, uh, Wallace. So I've been using percentiles. What if I just put like a score on them, 1 to 100, just convert that to a score. So he's like a 17 and Layden Robinson's about 27. Those guys don't hit often. Um, there were probably some better options at those points. And then Javon Baker's the, the double up at receiver. I do love that, doubling up at receiver. Sure. And Baker, as far as a fourth-round pick goes, probably one of the best available options there. So I think the Patriots did not as well as they could, but you know about as expected. And, and they tried to load up on offense and fill some of the, the holes that they have on that roster. Yeah, I think there's definitely um, a case to be made that Drake May should sit. Not because Drake May needs to sit, because, you know, he's not ready. It's a thing for him. But because the situation, like that on paper, that doesn't look much better than Carolina had a year ago at this time, right? Now, Carolina's ended up look, being a lot worse than we thought it was. But if you rewind to where we were last season, Carolina's offensive situation, we thought their line would be okay and their receivers, there was a world you could muddle through. And it ended up being a complete and total catastrophe. And Bryce Young had one of the worst rookie seasons we've ever seen from a quarterback. So, you know, the Patriots doesn't look that much better on paper than what Carolina had. They would want to get a handle very quickly in preseason on how bad that's going to look, whether or not you need to sit uh, Drake May. Like if they're if they're going through preseason and they're off their first string offense is just getting wrecked, I would think about just sacrificing Jacoby Brissett for the year. <laughs> Get out there. I mean, it's it's like the uh, one of those creep back toward average offensive lines where you look at the receiving core and you say, okay, if we get the best of all of these guys, it can work. Yeah. That's Juju Smith-Schuster. He's he's played good ball at various points in his career. Kendrick, Kendrick Bourne's been a reliable target. Demario Douglas showed a lot as a rookie in the slot last year. K.J. Osborne's been a very nice complimentary third, fourth type of receiver for teams. And then Jalen Polk added to the mix to go with Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper at tight end. Again, you know, solid options. The aggregate thing, though, hasn't worked well for New England in the last couple of years. Not having an impact receiver or any kind of pass catcher has been a big issue for the Patriots. So, um, look, I'm good. I, I think they make the right move in getting Drake May. We went back and forth theorizing all the different things. I, I understand the trade down. I'm a Drake May fan. I think he'll he'll get there. 
but it's going to take some time, I think, to get the rest of the, the supporting cast there in New England.